Let's call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll begin with a moment of silent prayer and then a pledge. Please stand. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, everyone is here. We have a we have a quorum. I'll begin with the affidavit of posting. This is a meeting of the Washington County Board of Supervisors. Prior to this meeting, public notice was given by posting a copy of the agenda in the office of the county clerk and emailing the agenda to the West Bend Daily News, which is the official newspaper. In addition, the agenda was emailed to CNI Newspapers, Express News, Kewaskum Statesman, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, WIBD, WMBZ Radio, and WTKM Radio. The above action is in conformity with the state of Wisconsin's open meeting law. Uh, we'll begin with the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion. Supervisor Schleif, Supervisor Mahalik. Any changes, additions? Uh, Supervisor Sorcy, did you have one? No. Okay. Um, let's see, we have uh, no changes. I'll vote on this. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, personal appearances, letters, and other communications. Uh, we'll begin with the commendation of Deputy Medical Examiner Greg Garbage. Whereas on May 14, 2020, United States Navy Petty Officer First Class James B. Pritchett, retired, died unexpectedly in his apartment in the city of West Bend with circumstances that could have resulted in his body joining the ranks of the unclaimed, and whereas Deputy Medical Examiner Craig Garbage felt it is not fitting for someone who dedicated his life to defending this great nation to join the ranks of the unclaimed, and whereas Deputy Medical Examiner Craig Garbage dedicated countless off-duty hours to coordinate a short memorial service with military funeral honors for Petty Officer First Class James Bridget with consideration for attendee safety during the current COVID-19 pandemic, and whereas Washington County employees have adopted our mission, vision, and core values, including respect, integrity, compassion, collaboration, innovation, and optimism. And whereas this effort is an authentic example of public servants going above and beyond in pursuit of an authentic quality of life for all residents. Now, therefore, we, Josh Shulman, Washington County Executive and County Board Chairman Don Creepel, hereby commend Craig Garbage for the character dedication and hard work exhibited ensuring a proper burial for this veteran who honorably served his country for more than 20 years. Are, are top notch here, and you're one of the best. Um, doing this is above and beyond Call of Duty. Um, I, I'm proud of what you did. I really am. Well, Thank you. Yeah. I wouldn't have had it any other way. <laughs> well, small token of our appreciation. So. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. For those of you who weren't able to join us uh, at the event, it was it was really kind of special. There was probably 100, 150 people that yeah. showed up kind of last minute uh, and paid, paid our last respects, and it was, it was really neat. And Craig deserves uh, all the credit for making it happen, uh, and certainly all, all the glory to God and, and to a veteran who served his country, right? Yeah. That's what it was all about. It was about him. Thank you. Next on agenda is the uh, sewer pack and a report. Do we have that? That's yes, going to be Kevin, remotely correct. Kevin is here remotely.
So, Kevin, you can go ahead and introduce yourself and share. All right. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you, Chairman Creek and Supervisors, for inviting me to report to the board today, uh, as I do uh, at least once a year. Um, and the commission really appreciates the continued partnership of Washington County on the uh, issues that we address for the county and for the larger region. Uh, and I also really appreciate the staff and uh, uh, the supervisors and board uh, allowing me to uh, present remotely today. Um, the reason that I'm doing that is because we do have four of the seven counties in the region that are fairly high in their infection rates. Um, and I wouldn't want to present in one location and then bring it to a location like Washington County that doesn't have a terribly high infection rate um, and then be the disease vector that they you know that spreads at other places. So um, we are doing these sorts of presentations remotely and I appreciate that. Um, next slide, please. Uh, because there has, of course, been an election since the last time the Planning Commission is, for those of you who may not know, um, Southeastern Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission has existed since 1960, and our mission is to provide advisory planning for local units of government in the region. Um, specifically, the state statutes delineate that we look at anything related to public infrastructure, and then also land use development and housing as well. Uh, we see our main mission as providing planning and engineering data and analyses for our constituent units of government in the region. Um, in addition to the seven counties shown on the screen here, uh, there are also 147 cities, villages, and towns that we work for as well. Um, in addition, uh, the state statutes do require, and federal requirements also require us to uh, develop long-range regional plans in a number of areas, and we, we do fulfill that mandate. And we also work with our constituent community staff, um, so departments of development, department of public works, uh, uh, um, planners and other entities within different units of government across the region to coordinate um, any activities that may be more regional in, in nature. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, just so that uh, you're aware, again, for those of you who may not be familiar with the commission, the commission has 21 members on its uh, governing board, three from each county. Uh, one is appointed by the county board and executive uh, jointly. The executive and the board uh, uh, consents to that appointment. Um, one appointed uh, by the governor from a list of at least two candidates submitted by the county board, and one appointed directly by the governor. Um, in order for Washington County, those are Supervisor uh, Schleif, um, uh, Commissioner Daniel Schmidt, and uh, Commissioner David Stroik. Uh, the commission also has a number of advisory committees that a number of county staff are on. Um, in particular, uh, Deb Silski uh, from Parks and Planning and also uh, Scott Schmidt, Highway Commissioner, um, are on a number of our different committees. Uh, and through these advisory committees, various units of government, public officials, agency representatives provide input to make sure that our planning efforts uh, represent the will of the region and also are useful. Um, we don't desire to do planning just so that something sits on the shelf. We want to make sure that it's effective and useful for our constituent units of government. So, uh, next slide, please. Talking okay, a bit about um, uh, recent major efforts. Um, one thing I just wanted to, um, actually, can we skip to the, the next slide? I just want to make sure I set the right presentation here. There, can I skip to the next? Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to start here. I apologize for that. Um, so recent efforts for Washington County. Um, again, many of you are likely familiar with these efforts, but these are things that the commission staff have worked with county staff um, to assist them on or other units of government within the county. So, um, as many of you know, because you were part of it, uh, Washington County relatively recently completed the required 10-year update to its uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, the county's plan is a multi-jurisdictional plan, meaning that it involves other units of government within the county. Uh, this is a fairly extensive effort where the commission assisted county staff um, on developing this update. It's a fairly substantial document, as the county staff can attest. Um, it was approved by the board in April 2019, and the report has been published since the last time I was in front of you last summer. Um, this 
effort also included assistance to 11 participating local governments throughout the county. Um, those participating local governments are, were, were towns that, uh, largely towns, not entirely towns, um, that we assisted in developing individual land use maps and, and planning efforts for those towns in coordination with the county as well. Uh, I believe all but one of those communities has completed that effort also. Uh, we did assist the county recently, just this past winter, with um, the county park and open space plan update. The county staff did the majority of the work on, but we did assist them with a few chapters there. Um, and we also provided data and analysis as needed for the relatively recently adopted county bikeway and trail network plan. Um, those of you who have been on the board for, for a little while are likely familiar with the discussions with Ozaki County regarding the future of each county's uh, transit program and whether or not it makes sense for the counties to have a joint transit program similar to the departments of public health that are joint between the two counties. Um, commission staff have, to the best of our ability, assisted with that effort. Um, we did some data analysis fairly early on in fall of 2017 when that, that discussion was first initiated. Um, and recently we provided data analysis to the, the individual that the counties uh, jointly hired to uh, manage their, their separate training programs together. Uh, and we're available in the future as that conversation continues, if that conversation continues. Um, to assist with further, further data and analysis. Uh, the county also has a transportation coordination committee that really focuses on transportation services for seniors and people with disabilities in the county. It contains um, uh, obviously county transit staff, but also um, uh, the staff from the city of Hartford Taxi and the city of West Bend Taxi, and also a number of nonprofits that work in the transportation space in the county. And commission staff are on that committee as well. Again, provide data assistance, recommendations, advice um, as needed. Uh, commission staff also provides assistance to zoning uh, or zoning assistance to towns uh, across the region, including towns in Washington County, on request. Um, in the text report that was included in your agenda, there's some notes regarding the towns that we assisted uh, over the past year. Uh, next slide, please. Um, other things that we have recently worked on for the county, uh, there's currently underway a lake management plan for Silver Lake uh, in, uh, in Washington County. Um, not quite in Washington County, but including the air areas in the southern, south central part of the county. We are also working on a study of uh, the Oconomowoc River. Actually, the river, of course, uh, is partially in the county, but uh, in particular, this is from the North Lake Management District in Waukesha County. Um, but we are working within Washington County and with uh, the county on that effort a bit um, to, to complete that study and analysis that the North Lake Management District requested. We're also, uh, we also have uh, recently provided updated land use and, and pollute information for the big Cedar Lake Protection and Rehabilitation District as well on their request. Uh, we're continuing our, our channel restoration, stream channel restoration work uh, in the town of Farmington with the Ozaki Washington Land Trust. That's been going on for a while and we continue to do that as well. Uh, commission staff also provide upon request um, for public or private entities um, uh, wetland or environmental corridor delineations in the region. And between when I was in front of you last summer and now, six of those were completed in Washington County as well. Next slide. One of our roles as, as the Regional Planning Commission and our regional efforts is uh, we are also the federally, uh, the state designated or federal uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization in addition to being the Regional Planning Commission. Uh, metropolitan Planning Organizations are required uh, in the U.S. for any metropolitan area with more than 50,000 individuals. Um, within Washington County, that's portions of the Milwaukee urbanized area and the southeast portion of the county and then also the separate West Bend urbanized area that covers obviously the city of West Bend, but also Hartford, Slinger, and, and other areas in between. Um, the commission fulfills the federal requirements. These are requirements from the Federal Highway Administration uh, as a metropolitan planning organization. And by fulfilling those requirements, we keep state, county, and local transportation projects eligible for federal transportation funds. Uh, one of our recent efforts in this, uh, this was back on that earlier slide that I had put in out of order, um, 
is, uh, as many of you are familiar, there is a plan, plan called Vision 2050, which is southeastern Wisconsin's long-range land use and transportation plan. Every four years, we are required to update that plan, uh, and commission staff over the past year have been working hard to complete that four-year update on time, which we are going to be able to do. Uh, the commission is expected to adopt that update next Wednesday, a week from today. Uh, continuing to have, a, by getting that update done before the middle of July, um, that continues to enable uh, projects across the region to be eligible for federal transportation funds. Uh, over the past decade, about $125 million in Federal Highway Administration funds and about $15 million in Federal Transit Administration funds have been spent in Washington County by the county, the state, or local units of government. Uh, over the past year or so, uh, what's listed on the screen are a few of the projects that have been funded with these Federal Highway or Federal Transit Administration funds, resurfacing I-41, um, rehabbing the bridges along I-41 as well, uh, and then the County Highway M Bridge of the Milwaukee River being replaced. The Commuter Express and the County and City Share Ride Taxis in the county also receive a fairly substantial amount of Federal Transit Administration funds each year, which again is enabled by this work. Um, all of the bullets here total up almost $30 million that was expended in 2019 on the transportation network in the county. Next slide. Uh, another thing that is currently ongoing uh, that we are coordinating with the seven counties on is uh, 2020 orthophotography uh, for the region. Um, orthophotography is aerial photos, but they've been orthogonally rectified to deal with changes in elevation so that uh, you can create a true map out of those photos, which are important for a number of land information services uh, uh, yeah, a number of land information services. Um, the commission staff uh, obtained federal funds to assist the seven counties with this effort. Uh, and we also utilize some of the locally uh, raised commission funds to reduce the cost of the purchase of these or the photos for the counties. Um, this, these photos are always uh, flown. They're flown by um, uh, low altitude flights. Um, to actual small airplanes that are flying these photos. Um, and uh, they were filmed this spring. They're always done before leaf out and after snow. Um, in Wisconsin, sometimes that's a challenge, but this spring did cooperate. Um, and so uh, the product is expected to, to be delivered to all the counties in the fall. Um, we do hire a, a consultant team to do this for us, but the commission staff does do the quality control for the counties before we deliver it to the county land information offices. Uh, next slide. Uh, one regional, uh, additional regional study that I wanted to note, because this is our major region-wide effort that is ongoing right now, um, it's called the Regional Chloride Study. Uh, this is a study of the amount of salt in our lakes, rivers, and streams across the region. Uh, the amount of salt has really increased substantially uh, over the past 30 or so years, and the rate seems to be accelerating. Um, we initiated this effort in 2017 with uh, 37 stream, uh, ongoing stream monitoring locations across the region and about half a dozen uh, lakes that are sampled quarterly um, uh, with the, the sampling project starting in, in 2018. Um, the the purpose of the initial part of this effort is to identify the amount of chloride reaching the lakes, rivers, and streams in the region. Um, we certainly have some spot sampling that led us to this study, uh, but uh, we don't have some the robust enough data to figure out how much chloride is coming from different watersheds in the region. And the reason that we are studying this is that um, on the surface, I think a lot of people would probably attribute the increase in salt in lakes, rivers, and streams to road salt, um, uh, which we, of course, use to melt ice and snow to keep our, our roads safe during the winter. Um, and there's certainly some of that going on, absolutely. Um, but one of the reasons that this study was requested, and it was requested by Walworth County in the southwestern part of the, re part of the region, is because Lake Geneva, one of the more premier lakes in the region, despite having a fairly small watershed with not a lot of roads, has seen its salt uh, content increase fairly substantially over the past 20 to 30 years. And so commission staff are working to determine 
other sources. We, we know uh, water softeners in homes and businesses may be contributing. We know um, that some agricultural practices may be contributing. But we don't know how much is coming from those different sources. And so we want to do uh, as best we can to identify that. And then also determine if there are ways to reduce those uh, uh, impacts on the way to the streams in the region without inhibiting either economic activity or, or in the case of roads, um, safety. But um, the more salt that is spread in many locations or used uh, in the case of water softeners, the more expensive it is for the owners and operators of, of either those roads or, or um, those water softeners. So we also are looking at this from the perspective of trying to reduce costs um, as well as the negative impacts on the lakes, rivers, and streams in the region. Um, I will say we do have some lakes in the region that are getting close to brackish. Um, and, and once they get much past brackish, uh, which basically means brackish means you can start tasting the salt in the water on your tongue, um, that starts becoming a problem for freshwater fish species and other species to survive, which obviously would have a negative impact on some of the, um, uh, the fishing in the region, which is, of course, something that people enjoy, but it's also a, an economic driver for the region from a tourism perspective. Next slide, please. Um, so this concludes the, uh, the presentation I have. Uh, obviously, you're provided with a report that was a bit longer as well. Um, I'm happy to take any questions from, from the Chamber of Supervisors, if you would like at this time. Supervisor Bossert. Okay, because we have a new county board that's only been active about two months, I want to talk about a little bit of the history with Vision 2050. So back in 2016, uh, an amendment came out to Vision 2050. It included seven regional taxes to fund rail-based passenger projects. And at the time, our board voted unanimously to oppose any regional taxes and any involvement in passenger rail. Mm -hmm. I encourage us all to continue in that position. In my view, passenger rail is largely a dying form of transportation. There are a few exceptions, but a very few. New York City with their subway is obviously an exception, but that's a really densely populated area. Other than examples like that, rail is pretty much dying. The transportation initiatives that are emerging and growing organically without the involvement of, go of government are much more customizable. There are options like Uber, Bubbler Bicycle, and Bird Scooters. And I expect we're going to see more options like that emerging over the next 10 years. There's talk of uh, driverless car programs similar to Bubbler, where using your phone app, a driverless car would pull up right in front of you and take you where you want to go. Now that may be 20 years off instead of 10 years off, but that's where transportation is moving organically without government. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because any planning for rail-based transportation starts with that Vision 2050 Regional Transportation Plan, and Sewer Pack is the steward of that. So I think it's important for all of us to remain clear with Sewer Pack that we have no interest in any regional taxes or any passenger rail projects. All right, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions or for Kevin? Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate your time. Oh, oh Brian, sorry. Supervisor Gallops. Thank you. So regarding the uh, regional grab the, grab the mic. Yeah. Regarding the regional chloride study, uh, what recommendations are going to potentially come before this board on uh, our highway use of uh, salt products, for example, because that's where a majority of this comes from, is roads across our country. Yeah, so um, we currently, you know, I can't comment necessarily on whether that that's a majority. Um, we actually think it might be slightly less than the majority, but certainly it's a substantial contributor. Um, we, so, it's a chloride study and not a plan specifically because we don't plan to make recommendations uh, as part of the effort. We are going to do research and talk about best practices. Um, we won't necessarily be making recommendations to the counties or units of government. Um, I will say that Washington County has already been doing a fairly robust job of working at alternatives to salt. 
um, and, and Scott Schmidt can, can attest to that. Um, the, uh, the county's been doing uh, a fairly robust job of what's called grinding, um, which is a different process uh, of essentially, uh, I guess the simplest way to say it is to liquefy the salt so that it sticks to the road uh, better. Uh, and you can use quite a bit less salt and experience has shown thus far in, in southeastern Wisconsin, you use quite a bit less salt and you get better performance. Um, so those are the sorts of things we're trying to focus on is ways that we can improve or keep safety at the same level while reducing costs for the counties um, or, or local units of government. The, uh, the grinding practice does have some upfront capital costs to make the investment in the grinding equipment, um, but once you make that investment, it is cheaper to operate over time because you're using so much less salt. Uh, so those are the sorts of things we're going to be trying to um, explore and see if there's more, even more cutting edge uh, techniques that are coming out or things that can be developed um, that are applicable to, to our region. Thank you. Okay, are there any other questions? What am I supposed to get to get this? Supervisor Dice, go ahead. I got you, you're on. No, oh, you're on now. <laughs> Okay, you're good. No, you turn yourself off again. All right, I'm turning you on right now. <laughs> Lois Ash Ashley said, if you have any problems with this, ask Christian Lois. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, my question is regarding that work with photography. Do you, can you use drones for that? Wouldn't that sure. save some money? Um, so, uh, interestingly, all of the photography costs keep coming down. Um, it is something that, at least with current drone technology, they don't go high enough to get the perspective you need. Um, it's, it's most efficient, um, you know, as a comparison, say the plane that's flying this might need to crisscross the county uh, 16 times or something like that to, to get the um, uh, get cover the entire county, or as a drone at this point would still be talking about hundreds of times. Um, and because you do need a, a, a human operator for the drone, it's not necessarily more cost effective. Um, but we're definitely aware of that and, and thinking about whether or not drones will make more sense in the future. Um, we did explore it for 2020 and it was determined by the, the counties that it, the technology wasn't there yet. Um, but I agree, drones are definitely developing uh, of course, they're, they're around for all sorts of things already, and, and they're developing in this direction rapidly. Oh. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Kevin. Thanks for all the work you guys do. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Consideration upon request reading resolution ordinance. 2020 Ordinance 1, uh, I'm not going to read through the entire uh, package, um, take a, entertain a motion to Supervisor Smisek, Supervisor Dice. Um, we're going to have an, Jamie's on here to explain this one, do you want to do it? If you need explanation. Yeah, does anyone need an explanation, that's pretty straightforward, okay. Seeing no questions, uh, oops, sorry. Supervisor Mahalik. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to let everybody know uh, this was actually thoroughly reviewed. We've had all the information in our packet, plus the fact that this was passed unanimously by executive, because this is, and you can speak uh, to uh, uh, Jeremy Stern, that a lot of this was housekeeping and cleaning up what we were supposed to be doing now uh, with the current setup of the committees. So. Uh, uh, I think that it's very safe to move forward on this with a positive vote. Thank you. Thank you. See no further discussion, we'll vote on this electronically. Okay. I think so. Okay. Yeah. 
Here it is. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Uh, next on the agenda is communication from the county executive speaking of the 2020 budget process and calendar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so in your package, you have the 2021 uh, budget process and calendar. For those of you who've been here before, uh, there are a number of changes uh, that you're making. Um, you'll see those as we go through the document, and I will I will read through it. Uh, but what I will point out is the, the change changes really revolve around the timing of when committees are going to review the budget. Whereas in the past, uh, as you can see, this time of year, we start setting budget targets. Uh, those are sent to departments. Departments then begin to put their budgets together based on those targets. And ultimately, uh, in July and August, are finalizing those documents. Historically, then the committee in August would review the budget. It would then come to the county administrator's office. If you look closely at the calendar, uh, that arrival at the committees now is not happening until September. So we're taking more time in the month of uh, August and even the beginning of September to finalize the budget itself. Uh, and then those packets will be put together and sent off to your respective committees that you can see laid out the matrix at the bottom. Ultimately, once the committees have uh, reviewed budget documents, uh, the executive committee uh, which, according to your code, is the budget committee. Uh, we'll review the, fi the final version of the budget, uh, and then it comes to you uh, for final approval. So with that, um, if there's any questions specifically about the budget timeline and the budget process, I think you have to answer those. Otherwise, I, have, I do have one other item. Supervisor Mahawk. Thank you. This actually might be directed more toward Ethan uh, as our lobbyists for the legislature. Uh, obviously, the state of Wisconsin does a biannual budget. Uh, I know that we've been trying to get to move, uh, and we have supported as Washington County to move to go to a biannual budget for counties. I think it would make a tremendous amount of uh, sense based on the fact that we're dealing with uh, the state. I think it would also be easier on uh, the county staff and the county executive. So where are we on that? So the legislation itself has actually already been passed. Now it's a matter of implementing it, and the law that passed would actually not have the first final budget until an even year. So since this year is an I number year, uh, we'll be doing some trial runs of a supposed biennial budget just so we can get used to the system. Uh, but the actual first final budget won't be until 2022-2023. So it will actually coincide then with the reorganization of the county board. It will after the census. Not exactly. Um, the 2022 budget will be approved by this board. Okay. So the 2022-2023 budget will be approved by this board. What's nice about that is uh, the new folks will get elected then in April. They'll sit a full year before they actually do the budget. So right. they'll learn how the county works for a year before they get to that budget process, which I think is a good thing. Thank you, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Supervisor Dice. Uh, Josh, under the calendar under July and August, uh, your second bullet point there indicates that departments present their budget request to county exec, county board chair, and the committee chair. That's new, correct? Um, I don't remember this happening before. Or else I'm getting dual. No comment. <laughs> well, uh, it, it has always depended on the complexity of the budget. Last year we did not do it, but we have in other years. Um, we felt in this um, new process with the county executive, it was important to have the chairs involved as early as possible. Thank you. Any further questions? So I do have one more thing. Oh, okay. Uh, if, you, if you don't mind to share. Uh, how about it? Okay. Um, I, I, I handed out at the beginning of this meeting uh, a copy of the county's mission, vision, and values. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to, again, go through them or read them to you. Um, but I'm going to ask that you all 
take a read through them um, and, and get familiar with the, those documents or that document. Um, I think it, it's one thing that's come up in a number of our uh, conversations uh, as we have talked one-on-one. -on -one, um, you and a number, a number of you and I. Um, so I would, I would ask for you to familiarize yourself or re-familiarize yourself with this document. You're going to see as we lay out the budget specifically, a lot of references to the material uh, that's on this document. Um, so I want to make sure everybody's that happy with it. I think it speaks particularly in turbulent times like the one we're in now. Um, this is what keeps us um, steady. So please familiarize yourself with that, and, and uh, especially as we go on the budget here. And if anybody has any questions about that, I can answer them. You're interested in this channel. Sure. Are there any questions regarding this? It's a pretty important document. A lot of work went into it. It's, uh, it's our core, uh, along with our, our uh, I can't think of the name of it, but um, this, is, this is important that, that we know this, especially when we, we deal with and speak with our constituents, because this is part and parcel of, of what we are. Okay. Seeing no further questions, that's it. Mr. County Executive, one one more one from the clerk. Yes. Can all of the new supervisors after the meeting please come up to the county clerk's office? We have to take your photo. Can we get updates? Yeah. <laughs> if you wish. You think you know better? Better than looking for Good luck with that. Okay, um, next meeting date, Wednesday, July 8th, 2020, at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, we are here by adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.